Hi, I'm Jiho Kwak from KAIS, and I'm going to present our paper, Effect Driven Robot Behavior Learning System Using EEG Signals for Less Negative Feelings and More Positive Outcomes. EEG signals are widely used as feedback mechanism since it can enable communication via naturally occurring signal while interacting with robot. However, Original methods required user to be always attentive for task evaluation, which increases task difficulty. Also, most EEG-based tasks were discrete trials, excluding randomness which occurs in real-world environment. So it was important to design a successful closed-loop system, which can enable users to develop appropriate trust toward the robot system. To solve these limitations, our goals of research are as follows. First, we aim to develop a closed-loop control system that learns emotional reactions to robot behaviors and provides effective feedback to optimize their parameters. Furthermore, we considered how user feedback of emotion can impact the user's affective processes in the brain associated with robot behaviors. We also investigated the effectiveness of human effect as feedback in a closed-loop system, comparing it to an open-loop system. We conducted an empirical study for monitoring and learning users' affective process through EEG signals while interacting with a robotic arm for these goals. This figure is an overview for our proposed closed-loop effective system. We've designed a closed-loop system using humans' EEG signals as feedback of the loop to improve robot behavior. By this, we propose a closed-loop control system that learns effective responses to robot behaviors and provides natural feedback to optimize robot parameters for smoothing the next action. Experimental results that will be explained in future slides will demonstrate our effect-driven closed-loop control system yielded better effective outcomes and task performance than an open-loop system with correlated neuroscientific characteristics of EEG signals, thus enhancing the quality of human-robot interaction. This is figure of our experimental paradigm. For every participant, we've done training, evaluation, testing sessions sequentially. Details of each part will be explained in following slides. For training session, we've used IAPS dataset. In one trial, we've shown baseline image, which has white cross on the black background for one second, an IAPS image for 3 seconds. Total 30 IAPS images were shown to each participant continuously. EEG signals were rated from 1 to 9 in terms of violence, arousal, and dominance, and we've rescaled these ratings from 1 to 6. 32 electrodes and 500 Hz sampling was used for EEG signal acquisition in our entire experiment. In evaluation session, total 10 trials were done for each participant. Each trial starts with robot's movement, and when the robot's movement is done, beep sound notifies participants to self-assess their level of effective scores from 1 to 6. After participants check their effective scores in tablet, they hit a blue button next to them to start next trial. EEG signals between robot's initial movement and the beep sound are extracted continuously into 2 second segments, and EEG signals from 2 seconds before the robot's initial movement is used to correct unrelated variations. This is our demo video for evaluation. The survey form that you can see in the video is the format we've used for participants 
self-assessment their affective scores. Feelings such as anxiety, fear or surprise is closer to want, and feelings like stability, safety or comfort is closer to six. As you can check in the video, there is a beep sound after each ending of robot's movement, and the participant hits the button next to them to notify that they finished self-assessment. I'll skip the video. Next is the training session. We've used three types of containers for the testing test, and each container requires different tasks for participants. First is empty container. Participants should fill in the container with small plastic balls when robots give the first container to them. Second is full container with plastic balls. Participants should empty the container when robot gives the second container. But since the container's wall isn't high enough and it is open-ended, balls might drop while the container is delivered to participants if robot has high speed. Participants should also pick up the balls if they have fallen. Last one is the container with a cookie on it. Participants should eat the cookie on it when the container is delivered to them and are encouraged to receive it with their mouths if possible. Each container are delivered in two ways, height close to their face level or height is on the desk. So total six tasks are formed and five iterations were done for each task. Participants should hit a blue button next to them to notify when each task were done. And there was two group of participants, which participants were randomly divided. For the first group, the open loop group, speed of the robot remained constant for every iteration. The other group, the closed loop group, speed of the robot changed in each iteration, depending on the previous speed and EEG signals on the same task in the previous iteration. For specification, Speeds are also separated for catching stage and giving stage. This is our demo video for testing. For the first task, robot delivers empty container to participant's face level. Participant fills in the container and hits the blue button to notify the end of task. For the second task, Robot delivers container full of plastic balls to face level. Participant empties, picks up the balls, and hits the button. For the third task, robot delivers container with a cookie on it to face level. Participant receives with his balls and hits the button. For the 4th to 6th task, robot delivers same containers as before, but delivers them on desk. Participant executes same task as task 1 to 3. i skip the video. This figure shows the valence values and the relative completed times through the experiment for the two groups. Remarkable result was on task using container 1, both open and closed groups have increased valence and reduced task completion time. This suggests that anticipating the next behavior of the robot can help the participant learn a lesson and leave a strong affective cue that may guide future behavior for a simple task. Plus, Thanks to training and practicing from consecutive trials, people chose a different course of action for completing some tasks faster than before with better emotional outcomes. This also implies that the participants developed their understanding through memory retention and recall processes about its reasoning through consecutive and repeated trials. Furthermore, we could observe that the closed loop group had greater improvements both on valence and reducing task completion time than the open loop group. 
from the fact that the giving stages are designed to have unreliable relativities of the robot arm and require closer approaches than the catching stage, the participants in the closed-loop group were more likely to correctly and confidently agree with the robot behaviors of grasping and giving objects. These results imply that while performing iterative tasks, participants perceived using the closed-loop affective system to be more productive and comfortable, which means shorter task completion time and less negative feeling than using the open-loop affective system. Table 1 is Spearman's rank correlations between the task completion time C and valence value Z for P smaller than 0.001. It suggests that a highly negative correlation in the closed loop group. In addition, we observe that the giving stage exhibits a stronger relationship than catching stage since the giving stage requires a robot approach to the user closer, the statistical relationships between the two objects implies that increased balance improves the overall performance when their tasks require mutual approaches in interaction. To investigate EEG activities when people have different affective responses using the robot approach, we analyze the statistical difference of mean changes in the four frequency bands, theta, alpha, beta, and gamma bands of the EEG signals. Between the four frequency bands and valence ratings, we computed the p-values of the Spearman for the positive and negative correlation tests for all participants in the closed-loop group. Then, we combine them into one p-value using Fisher's method, and the resulting p-values for the correlation directions, electrodes, and frequency bands are as table 2. The frequency in the frontal and occipital cortices such as FC5, FC2, F3, O1, and O2 was significantly correlated with balance when the robot approached participants. We also found that EEG powers in the alpha and beta bands over the cortices were significantly different against the baseline emotion when the users felt strongly positive when Z was larger than 4 and negative valence when Z was smaller than 3 response to the robot approach. The discovered activation supports neuroscientific studies on emotional progress with visual processing and EEG activation between the frontal and occipital regions was also reported to be related to positive and fear emotions. In conclusion, we could demonstrate that the closed-loop affective system that we've designed yielded better affective outcomes and task performance than original non-feedback system. Also, we find out that the robot could improve its choice of subsequent behavior as they received our users' affective responses as feedback elements and provided actions on those decisions to the user. And for future works, we are planning to develop an EEG-based computational model to capture social signals behind the human-robot interaction. Thanks for listening. If you have further questions, please contact via our email or website. Thank you.